Months to go to the closing bell of stocks. Now they're turning lower right now. And this after yesterday's 400 plus point rally as the Fed made 200 billion bucks available in loans to troubled banks. Fox is back now with Tracy Birch. Tracy is at the New York Stock Exchange. Tracy. Hi, Cheryl and Dave. Yeah, well, we're down about 30 now, and I have to tell you, no one is really surprised. You know, when I came in here before, somebody said we'll be down 100. They basically were, are, you know, what we said earlier, came to the realization that what the Fed did was great, not terrific. People are settling into the idea, and they're pretty much pulling back on it now. You know, they're also, not to get wonky, but there was a technical level in the S&P. It was 1315, 1313, depending on who you talk to, and we broke through that. And they said that if we broke through that, we were going to probably keep going. So here we are right now. We've broken through. We're like at 1310 on the S&P right now. And odds are good. We might, still, we might see a little sell-off at the close. All in all, though, it was a good day. You know, the leaders on the S&P, GE, City, Caterpillar. Caterpillar, of course, had great news today. Some of the laggards were AT&T and Chevron. Oil stocks did not benefit from crude being up today, nearing its all-time high of 110. And, of course, the story of the day was the airlines. You, you guys have been reporting, everyone's been reporting on this whole Southwest uh, issue that they've been flying planes that haven't passed inspection. So the Amex airline index is actually down 8%. Southwest is down a, a ton and all the other airline stocks are following suit. So there's the very mixed screens today, green and red all over the place. Right now we're down 38. We have about seven minutes down here. We'll see what happens. Cheryl, David, back to you guys. Mike, you know, he was, he was, she was, Tracy was bringing up the Fed move and David brought it up as well from yesterday. I, I actually have to tell you, I was surprised this morning that we had an uptick because you would have think after yesterday's 400 plus point move that today you'd see some profit taking. Are we getting that right now then at the close? I guess so. I wasn't surprised because the market was so oversold and there was such a panic and we made new lows on, on uh, the major averages. Uh, so, you know, it was due for a bounce and I would have thought you could have had two days off of that news. What's interesting is that the Fed did nothing new really. I mean, I gave you the, the sheet before, David. All the collateral that the Fed says is accepting now in this uh, term security uh, facility it accepts at the discount window, but the problem is the discount rate was always what the Fed should have done, lower the discount rate to the funds rate. It's the same exact thing. They had the ability to do this, so it's really nothing new. I think, uh, you know, it surprised the market because it seems like a new convention. Uh, it is, an, again, you know, the Fed uh, posturing or saying we're going to help the, the, the credit crisis. But, um, but if, Mike, hold on. They did, though. They did expand the level of, of collateral that oh, banks can use, here. though. Everything You're saying that that's, not, that's all, not the case. It's all accepted. It all, you know, it's all regulated. It has to be ex uh, 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 accepted. Uh, bank collateral, what banks are allowed to own, it's all on there. Even, look, you've got CDOs, you've got all of these instruments which the Fed uh, accepts as collateral as, at its discount. But, John, at some point, doesn't the market concern itself with what the Fed is holding in collateral and, and possibility that it's holding some real bummers? Uh, I think there's no risk for the Fed's collateral here, David. I'm very happy to see the market start with the 12,000 instead of 11,000. That's the victory yeah, yeah. of the week. The, uh, the Fed thing this week was really the generator that kicks in when your lights are off. You know, it's temporary. You can turn a few lights on. It's better than nothing. The reason they did it is because the federal funds market wasn't working. Banks wouldn't loan money to each other and take each other's credit risk, so they're taking back collateral. The, these mortgage bonds, are, this collateral is not going on the Fed's balance sheet. This is simply collateral for a loan from the Fed. And by the way, and it doesn't, the monetary let me, let me just base focus on and that for bank a second, John. John, let me just focus on that. Doesn't it in any way taint the balance sheet of the Fed, even in the short term? No, no. no. No, absolutely not. not. The Fed, not, the he, Fed is uh, an enormously profitable institution. <laughs> they take in reserves. They pay no interest. They always make Peter. money. This is yeah. not a problem. Well, but the monetary base and bank reserves have not grown and how, are not growing. The how, Fed how is can, not being it, generous with okay, reserves. All right, John, how, how can it not be a problem for the Fed to have as collateral behind our currency Mortgages of questionable value. That's what's that's what's taking, going on. Let's just explain that they're not taking it. It's collateral that banks pledge for a yeah, loan for they, 28 days. Yeah, and they're, and they're going to roll right. it over. They're not. They're going to roll it over 28 days from now. And the Fed is holding on to this risk. But you know, there was a big sell-off in the market today. It, but it wasn't in the stock market. It was in a foreign exchange market. The dollar got crushed. Record low against the euro. The dollar index the was dollar, at a record low. In fact, the dollar is down so much we've wiped out a good chunk of yesterday's you know nominal what? gains. The dollar is hold on. 
down so much that McDonald's is getting rid of the dollar menu and they're going to the euro menu. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yarn, yeah. yarn. Look, I, this idea has already been floated, but I got to ask you. I've heard folks just saying the Fed just needs to go in and actually just buy those troubled mortgages. That will fix this. What do you think of the idea? <laughs> that would be a disaster. I mean, the, the, the Fed needs to stop trying to tinker with this market. It needs to stop trying to fidget here and provide a little bit of liquidity there. Uh, it needs to back off. This market needs to clear. Uh, home prices need to still come down. You know, foreclosures are going to happen. But the market clears in the end, and we get over these things. But we're not going to get over them if the, if, uh, the Fed keeps... Uh, tinkering and creating more distortions in the market, which it does on an almost daily basis. Like we Step cleared aside, in 1933. We did a good clearing in 1933. No, in well, 1933, the Fed sucked yeah. liquidity out of the market, Mike. Yeah, Study the history. gold standard, yeah. they had to do that. Well, you know, we ought to put, you ought to history, put the Mike. gold price of the Dow up there on the monitor, or the euro price of the Dow, so American investors yeah, can absolutely. have a real sense of what's all, happening to their wealth. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. John Rutledge, what about the value of the dollar? Is, is the dollar going down now because of what happened to the Fed yesterday? Uh, the dollar's been going down for a long time. And the reason it has is because U.S. policy has been hostile to the dollar. We've been trying as a policy to cheapen the dollar so that American manufacturers can right. sell stuff at a higher price, but we've totally. devalued the entire stock of assets to make that happen. That's a stupid policy. John's totally but, you know, right. We worry well, so problem. much really about... Did, but, uh, about but, you know what, Mike, hold on. Here's the thing, though. Everybody's talking about this big cut we're going to get from the Fed next week. That, though, is going to weaken the dollar even more. I mean, they're really stuck <laughs> so at this what? point. I mean, so look, what? John, well, wait, wait, wait a so second. Look, John Rutledge is exactly right. we got a Treasury Secretary and we got Congress running around the world saying if you, if you keep your currency down, you're going to be branded as a currency manipulator, so you better sell ours instead. It's the stupidest thing I ever heard in the world. It's total positive. Policy. It has nothing to do with any economic. Uh, John Rutledge is 100% right. By the way, uh, I don't know if we're going to get that big of a cut. If you look now at what's implied in Fed funds futures, you know, maybe a 50% probability that we get a 50 basis point cut. Well, remember, the 75 is yeah. out. It's Yarn, the Yarn, maybe, the Fed, maybe the Fed yesterday was just trying to avoid that half a point cut that everybody's expecting. No, no, I think well, the cut it is, is coming, there's no question. The Fed is trying different gimmicks and different methodologies in order to try to get uh, liquidity into the market, to try to get people to trade. It's not working, so they keep coming up with a new, with a new gimmick. Uh, instead of, again, letting just the markets flush the problems out, flush. let them solve it. Yes, it might involve the recession. That might happen, but all they're doing is postponing the, the you know, postponing the day of but Remember, it's not, it's not just policy. Do. It's not just policy that's driving our currency lower. It's the way we're running our economy. It's the fact that we're not saving, that we're, that we're not producing we're not enough. Saving. We're running we these huge deficits. Seven trillion we're, in house household net that's, worth, that's that not is savings. assets, those so are the that's, account, not that's the accounting record of our savings. Well, no, it's it's not guys <laughs> trying to battle out who's right and who's wrong, the market is down today and it is ending down today, about 46 points down to the downside, of course that could change as things settle, but it's clear that we're going to end up.